the retina is it, it, just an amazing tissue and compared to all the other tissues of the body it uses up more oxygen per milligram than anywhere else and most of that oxygen is to feed the rather greedy photoreceptors who just sump up oxygen and to supply them you have the choroid and the choroid is the fastest circulation in the body. But even that is not enough. On top of that, it needs extra supply from the, uh, the retinal vessels in the inner retina. It's, it's in the normal day, it's only uh, a small percentage uh, that comes from the inner retina. But at night, the rods use even more oxygen. They gobble up oxygen as it gets darker, they gobble up more and more oxygen. And when you're dark adapted, then it uses up the most oxygen. At that point, the inner retina has to supply even more oxygen to the outer retina because the choroid, strangely enough, slows down. It sounds anomalous, but that's the way the system works. And the disadvantage is that in the, dis in, the, uh, in, in, in the dark adapted eye, the, the inner retinal circulation can barely cope with what it's supposed to do in the normal eye. So you can imagine in the diabetic eye, where, where the inner retinal vessels are, are diseased and not functioning very well, we have real trouble and produce hypoxia. Well, in the modern world, uh, we don't dark adapt very much because we have lights everywhere. It, you know, our ancestors had to navigate by starlight and, and they were virtually dark adapted at night time. Uh, but we have artificial light and so we don't dark adapt very often. The one time we do dark adapt, of course, is when we're asleep. What happens is with, with, with uh, hyperglycemia, you get pathology developing in the retinal blood vessels. Uh, the, the vessels start to thicken their basement membranes. They uh, lose pericytes. Uh, and they become sluggish. They, they swell in parts and form things called aneurysms that uh, uh, um, we're all aware of. Uh, and, and basically, they, they, they don't function very well. So the tissue around about them becomes hypoxic. And if you think of the, the inner ret retina suffering during the day, it gets even worse at night because of that high oxygen demand from the, uh, from the rods that, that has to be supplied uh, by the inner retina, supplementing the reduced load of the choroid. So this is a real problem uh, that is exacerbating the, pro the progress of the disease. Um, and of course, as the disease progresses, uh, you can get uh, DME uh, developing, and you can progress through from, uh, uh, with loss of vision, uh, from uh, mild, moderate to severe non-proliferative disease, and then reaching PDR, which is the proliferative part of the disease. Uh, diabetic retinopathy ultimately is a blinding disease. If, if not, if not controlled. Noctura 400 is a, is a mask, a light mask that you wear at night and it, it, shine, it shines a gentle green light into your eyes. It's made up of a, a mask structure plus a pod with, with two OLEDs in it. OLEDs are organic LEDs and uh, 
the pod also is quite clever in that it monitors uh, contact with the face. So you know how much uh, mask wear that your patient has had. And uh, this gentle glowing light uh, is, uh, is not really obtrusive. It goes through the, the lids and is of sufficient intensity to, to prevent the rods from, uh, from dark adapting, uh, but isn't sufficient to disturb your sleep too much. And uh, in fact, um, after a few moments, because of the Troxler effect, you're not aware of it. The pod is, is fired by a battery that has uh, a three month life. Um, and by wearing this each night, you have effectively a, a home treatment for your patient. It, it's, it's actually not a light treatment as such. What we're doing with the light is preventing those rods dark adapting and using the maximum amount of oxygen so that the, the, it relieves the, the stresses and strains and the hypoxia in the inner retina where the blood vessels are damaged. So the light, in a, in, in a sense, is, is, is providing an indirect oxygen therapy. At, at this stage, we don't know exactly where mask intervention is most effective. We, we, we just have not got that data available to us, but we know that the mask has got efficacy. What is exciting really, and what we have growing confidence about, is that, uh, that we know that uh, elimination or reduction of hypoxia is important at many stages of, of, of the development of, of this dreadful di di retinal disease. It's we know that it's a, it's a driver for late stage uh, disease, and we know that it's a driver for D, uh, DME, the, the, uh, the, macula, the maculopathy. Um, we also know that it's important in early stage disease. So because uh, Noctura 400 ha has a very good safety profile, it has a potential to be used at many different stages. So that's, that's the exciting thing about the mask. It's a home use device. And, and if the patient doesn't wear the mask, it's not matter, it doesn't matter how good a therapy it is, it's not gonna work for them. And uh, for some patients, that is the case. Uh, they, they find very, very early on that uh, uh, they won't wear the mask. But fortunately, that is by far the minority. And in all our studies so far, we, ha we now have experience of many uh, hundreds of thousands of mask wear hours. It uh, really depends how you define significant results. If, if you mean by significant results uh, visual improvement, then the answer is very simple. Uh, yes, you go for DME. Uh, and we have, uh, from our preliminary studies, um, uh, encouraging evidence that uh, uh, that the mask will uh, cause macular cysts either to go away or, or, or reduce in size significantly. And you can see evidence for that in uh, the, the paper published in I by our group. Um, in addition, uh, in, in, in the, uh, the Czech study, for, for example, uh, there was evidence of visual improvement uh, albeit in a small group of 35 patients. So clearly 
if if you want to look for visual improvement by the mask, then direct it towards your DME patients. Uh, if you want cessation or or, or um, in, in improvement in terms of of DR, then that's more that's more difficult. But nonetheless, we believe because it's a a, a, a treatment of hypoxia uh, that that will work also. So we're not excluding any stage or, or in the progress on the life history of this disease. And in fact, in, with, with the Czech study, many of our patients uh, had a severe non-proliferative or proliferative disease. So uh, uh, we're really encouraged by the spectrum of use of this safe treatment. Certainly, if a, 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 a patient has serious sleep problems that ne need medication, uh, uh, not self-medication, but uh, uh, they, they've seen their general practitioner and a practitioner is, uh, is helping them with, with sleep tablets, then I think then uh, uh, mask wear should, should be discouraged. Uh, uh, the other, the other one is uh, is infections and uh, uh, severe corneal surface disease. I, I wouldn't want to be wearing a mask, and certainly if they developed uh, an infectious uh, 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 conjunctivitis or keratitis or whatever, uh, you would want to replace the mask material when that clears up. Um, what I'm uh, a lot of uh, eye doctors ask. Uh, ask us is uh, oh, we will stop uh, uh, using the mask because the media is cloudy, uh, whether it be cataract or or, or hemorrhage. Um, I would continue uh, with, with those patients as long as the patient's happy to wear the mask and, and you've explained to the patient uh, that uh, there will be less light re reaching the retina. Now the reason uh, that I think it's still worthwhile continuing is that any light reaching the retina will prevent a level of dark adaption. It's not a light therapy, which I keep harping back to, it's an oxygen therapy. So the light is doing an indirect job for us. So there isn't a maximum or optimum light that we need. Uh, I look at it on the basis of, uh, of the, the Rod's role in life. And in our mo modern world, as I've said before, it's our cones that dominate what we, what we use. Yet, anomalously, it's the rods that use up all this oxygen. So, so actually, um, if, we, if we think about a, a, a slight reduction in, in rod responsiveness, then um, it, it, it's probably a price worth paying. I think what's, what worried us much more than, uh, uh, than lo losing a little bit of rod sensitivity uh, was if it interfered with retinal pigment epithelial phagocytosis. And that, of course, as you know, is the process whereby the pigment epithelium uh, chew off all the, uh, the spent uh, rod outer segments. Uh, in the, and the cue for doing that is you waking up in the morning. Uh, and uh, uh, that is a light stimulus. And of course, light off, light on is no longer really happening uh, in our uh, in our um, mask wearing patients, um, but we needn't have worried because we're, we've been assured by experts in circadian rhythm, and there's plenty of evidence out there in the uh, in the literature that uh, circadian processes like retinal pigment epithelial phagocytosis of rods can use many other signals. And in fact, that's what happens with night workers and all sorts of people 
who have a, 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 an irregular uh, light experience. This is very newsworthy at the moment because uh, um, uh, there are all sorts of uh, press publications and uh, scientific publications uh, su suggesting that exposure to blue light, which you can get quite intensely from your computer or, 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 or tablet screen, uh, will uh, will disrupt your uh, melatonin release and, and, and affect your sleep pattern. And, and, and that seems to be quite sound. With the OLEDs in, in, the, in the light mask in Noctura 400, uh, the wavelength is very tight around uh, 504 nanometers. So this is very much in the green. So I think it's actually um, uh, less than 5% actually strays into the top end of the, of the blue spectrum. And uh, none of it, or minuscule amounts, are at the level that, w that would uh, affect melatonin receptors. Uh, the Liverpool trial uh, was for three months and involved uh, normal and uh, patients with DME. And uh, the Prague one was six months and all the patients had, uh, had DME and advanced uh, DR. The Liverpool trial, uh, w w albeit with small numbers, showed a, a clear reduction in macular thickness and a, a, a 60 to 70 percent reduction of, uh, of cysts or uh, uh, elimination or reduced size. Um, so we were very impressed with that because uh, another group ha had showed a, a, a similar uh, situation uh, uh, with, with resolution of cysts in their paper. So uh, we, we, uh, we are confident that uh, uh, this is something that our mask will do and it will uh, uh, reduce macular, macular thickening and is particularly uh, effective on the, the cystoidal type of, uh, uh, of DME. Um, in the Prague study, uh, uh, 36, 35 patients uh, completed the six months. And uh, we, we've been able to show at a, 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 a trial conclusion that there was a significant improvement in, in the completing group of, uh, of their visual acuity, which is a difficult parameter to use even in a phase three trial. So that we that in a, a, a phase two trial, one two trial, uh, we could, we could show this is it, it, really exciting. So we we have through these studies been able to show that people will wear the mask. It's safe, and um, our device is CE marked. So we've been able to show levels of efficacy as well. I'm, I'm, I'm truly uh, excited about Noctura 400. It's a clever device. It, 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 it uses a novel mechanism to uh, fight hypoxia, which is such a, uh, a desperate driver uh, for uh, diabetic retinal disease. It has, has smart technology in it. It tells us uh, uh, whether the patient is, is wearing the device or not and can be used at home. And so the diabetic uh, patient is, is empowered in their own personal treatment. And it's also a reassurance with that technology because it, 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 it tells you that they're using the device properly and you can embed that into their treatment.
But I think the thing that uh, uh, that excites me most is that uh, this device does not break the bank in terms of cost. Uh, we we need uh, treatments that uh, are, are cost effective and can treat the whole range of the disease as we see it. Thank you.